Hello everyone, Rose Pants here, back for another highlight of a chapter from the pot book, which is a complete guide to cannabis. This week we are moving on through part two of the book. Today we are going through chapter 11, which is pulmonary harm and vaporizers. This chapter was written by Mitch Earlywine, and he is also a PhD. The first section of this chapter goes over lung cancer, and they do point out that some irritants, including ammonia, are even more concentrated in marijuana smoke than in tobacco smoke. So you can't just like across the board assume that just because you're smoking cannabis smoke, it doesn't have any other irritants present in that smoke that is going to harm your lungs unfortunately. However, on page 154 of the pot book, they do point out that currently multiple studies show no definite increase in rates of lung cancer among people who smoke marijuana but not tobacco. They believe the root cause of this is because cannabis smoke obviously contains cannabinoids and tobacco smoke does not. The process is a bit complicated, but the gist of it, of how it works, essentially is the cannabinoids present in cannabis smoke kind of encourage your damaged cells within your lungs. They're damaged because of whatever other things are in that smoke that you just inhaled. It damages your cells, but then the cannabinoids that are also in that smoke kind of encourage those cells to slough off more quickly and naturally and then replace them with nice new healthy cells. The other hand with tobacco smoke it does not have those cannabinoids it is not telling your body to naturally slough off those cells they just stay there and then they eventually turn into cancer. They do also point out in this section that in addition cannabinoids can decrease inflammation and tumor growth in ways that nicotine cannot. Moving on to the subsection of lung function Page 155 points out a 1997 study was done um, and data showed that people who had smoked up to three marijuana joints per day but no cigarettes for an average of 15 years did not differ significantly from those who did not smoke at all. These results suggest that cannabis smoke does not lead to COPD, which stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease which is a disorder of the lung airways. The next subsection of this chapter is bronchioscope examinations and biopsies. So even without creating cancer in our lungs or the COPD, there might be some other ailments that might come along from marijuana smoke. So these biopsies are a great way to determine that. Page 156 points out a 1998 study where visual inspection of the lungs revealed that people who smoked five joints a week for two years had more redness, swelling, and mucus in their lungs. People who smoked cannabis and tobacco concurrently had much worse symptoms. One kind of odd thing that was found from the biopsies of these patients of this study, it's kind of common knowledge that most lung cells have what's known as cilia, which are small hairs that help clear the lungs of particles. However, in cannabis smokers, many of these ciliated cells have transformed into cells more similar to skin. These changes were more common in people that smoked marijuana and tobacco, both at the same time, rather than just cannabis only, but it's still kind of a weird finding. So at first, this was extremely alarming, but because of the anti-carcinogenic factors that are there in the cannabis smoke and all of the cannabinoids, that kind of prevents lung cancer in general, or it's kind of been showing that it has. And so, yes, they're alarmed, but not as alarmed as they should be. Our next subsection is respiratory illnesses. A 1993 study kind of had mixed results with their study on respiratory illnesses. Uh, it's again on page 156 for this. Researchers reported mixed evidence for marijuana-induced increase in cold, flu, or bronchitis. Um, there was a review of a large sample of hospital records that revealed 36% of daily marijuana smokers saw a physician for respiratory symptoms over six years, and then only 33% of non-smokers sought treatment for the same problems. So if you're a non-smoker, your chances of going to see a doctor for respiratory 
illnesses is 33%. And then if you're a heavy marijuana smoker, it only goes up 3%. That's kind of good news, yes? So that one study for 1993 was kind of just a broad spectrum looking at hospital records. But then another study was done in 1991 that looked at heavy marijuana smokers, and they did report an increase or revealed more symptoms of bronchitis, including chronic cough and phlegm production. So they do conclude that although marijuana smoke does not appear to create lung cancer, it can alter measures of respiratory symptoms. So those are all of the broad harms that we need to be aware of whenever we're smoking cannabis. So obviously, smoking any type of smoke is going to be harmful for your lungs. So now let's move into some preventative measures and how to make it not so. Page 157 goes over healthier lungs for cannabis smokers, which includes oral administration, using vaporizers, refraining from holding hits, never smoking leftover resin, and using stronger marijuana can potentially decrease respiratory symptoms and airflow problems. Abstaining from cigarettes is another obvious step towards improving lung health. The first subsection of this healthier lungs for cannabis smokers is oral administration, which obviously is going to be your number one go-to if you don't want to harm your lungs. If you're ingesting cannabis orally, you are not producing any smoke. So you just cut it right there. You nip it at the bud, essentially. The only issue that can kind of come from this is that medical users seeking rapid relief from symptoms might find this approach too slow. And then also monitoring dosages can also require experimentation because you don't know how much to eat and how much is going to have that real high effect that you're looking for. Next comes vaporizers because obviously this does not produce a combustion of smoke. It is a fine mist, they say in the book. That's how they describe it. And it is treated without toxins. A clinical study done in 2007 administered cannabis to participants in the laboratory and shows that using the vaporizer leads to blood levels of THC comparable to smoking a joint but without raising expired carbon monoxide. A large survey of marijuana smokers also revealed that those who vaporize are less likely to report respiratory symptoms like coughing, wheezing, and increased phlegm. Next subject is about holding hits, which is great controversy, especially on my videos. Wherever I'm smoking, people are telling me that I'm not holding it in long enough or I'm holding it in too long. There's just a great debate about this topic. This book does quote two studies, one from 1989 and the other from 1991, that showed there was no difference in mood they considered it. There's not greater changes in mood from people who took a hit and blew it out immediately for like 20 seconds. There was no difference in hot. Page 159 reports that holding hits did not create a larger impact on mood, and in short, any extra high associated with holding hits probably stems from simply holding one's breath and, of course, denying your brain of oxygen. You might feel a little high. Next comes another very controversial subject, and that is resin. This is very controversial because there are no published data that addresses this subject, but we can only assume so much. They do mention, again, on, one, on page 159, that it could be extremely detrimental given the exposure to heat and burned material, and then the amount of tars in the black residue lining smoking apparatus is likely much higher than this appears to require higher temperatures to release smoke. Its THC content is also likely to be small. So really, when you're cleaning out your pipes, some people feel the need to save that resin, but throw that shit away. Don't keep it. Don't smoke it. The last subsection for healthier lungs for cannabis smokers is about stronger marijuana. They do say that given the limited fear of lethal overdose, marijuana with larger percentages of THC may offer some respiratory benefits. Although warnings that stronger marijuana is more dangerous abound, no research that actually assesses potency can support this assertion. And even a 1997 study pointed out that smoking less would decrease the amount of tars and noxious gases inhaled, limiting the risk for 
mouth, throat, and lung damage. And this is because if you're smoking stronger marijuana, you might not have to take as many hits, you won't feel the need to hold your hits, and this will all lead to greater pulmonary health. The conclusion for this chapter is quite simple. They suggest that adults who vaporize high potency marijuana and do not hold their hits or smoke the burned resin that appears on pipes or smoke cigarettes are less likely to experience coughs, wheezing, shortness of breath, and other symptoms. So I hope you guys learned a lot from that chapter. There's a lot of studies out there. There's a lot of studies that need to be done in the future so we know more about cannabis and our pulmonary health, lung function in general, but in short, we just need to be smoking stronger cannabis and realize that we don't need to hold our hits in. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, highlighting another chapter of the pot book. Join me next week where we'll be skipping ahead to chapter 14, which is how real are the risks of addiction. See you next time.